I think uh, Justin's team, by the way, looks pretty familiar. We casted a game with some similar Pokemon earlier today. I think it's actually uh, quite different in terms of item choices or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I see a Pelipper once again. <laughs> the MVP. Yeah. MVP like, Pelipper. We, we casted a player, so high who won earlier today on stream, and uh, the Pokemon were very, very similar, but the items were quite different. You know, it was, for example, Citrus Berry on Pelipper, and uh, this Pelipper actually has the Life Orb item. But uh, Pokemon composition are super similar. And I'm, I'm just fascinated. I, I like both of these team compositions once again. Like, not teams that you really would run into on the ladder. It's clear that... The players have thought a lot about how to approach like kind of anti-meta team building here and so i mean once again toro is rising up in usage i I'm, I'm shocked by that still just in itself i'm glad we finally get to see gothitel i don't know how good it'll be here because first of all like there is the mimikyu and the golden goal on the other side so you can't trap them in uh, there is also the king gambit which of course threatens the uh, gothitel with a super effective uh, dark type attack immediately but you know uh, Gothitelle still has utility, but this one does actually not have Trick Room. Yep. So, uh, Dragonite and Gothitelle both, I think, have utility here, but it's a little bit harder to feel fully comfortable bringing them into a matchup when your opponent has two things that are, you know, uh, like has that ghost typing. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's find out what these trainers are going to lead as Geo's going to set out Golden Go and Miascarada. And for Justin's side, here's the King Gambit and the Tauros. So, Toros. Huh, pretty offensive options on both sides, huh? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it, what's interesting, though, is I think King Gambit's actually decently well-positioned right now. And it doesn't have... Unless, you know, there was, like, a surprise fighting-type attack from Meowskarada. But given the team sheets, we know that Giovanni does not have that, right? Uh, and so, yeah, I think King Gambit in general is actually just a really good Pokemon into this entire matchup. Geo's best bet, I guess, it is actually utilizing that Talonflame. So I'm sure Justin's kind of relieved to not see Talonflame out on the field immediately. Right. And Toros is actually going to pivot out, kind of conserving that Intimidate for later on and not wanting to faint to something like a flower trick from that Meowskarada immediately. Exactly, and you don't want to have to, like, commit your Terra either to be able to withstand that, so definitely good to save that for later. Ooh. And so you'll see the Amoongus switch in in that place, but, uh, hmm, huh. Geo just going to go ahead and switch in the Tauros. So that Intimidate drop is going to activate the King Gambit's Defiant. So a really nice boost oh. coming in there, but, <laughs> oh, no way! Oh, the Mirror Herb! <laughs> my god okay okay hold on a second so so mirror was one of those items that we didn't maybe expect to, to see this uh, event uh, like it's so niche you're what? not necessarily going to guarantee that you get to copy those boosts but geo has done it position the tauros to get the defiant boost from the king gambit across the way uh and it just survived a pretty big attack so hmm you know, it's like, this is this is open team sheets, but I had just not looked at the item on the Tauros, and so that was so cool. Like that was <laughs> me either. You know what? It was something I glossed over because I'm like, it's a Tauros. It's pretty cool. I saw the <laughs> fighting Terra type, and I forgot to look at the item. Um, wow. Wow. But to see that in action, let's see if it pays off though, because Justin's going to go ahead and pivot around to play a bit more defensively here too. Getting the Pelipper in, setting up the rain, make sure that you're not going to be uh, falling prey to something like the Flare Blitz from Geo's Tauros. That is a move that, that could potentially be detrimental to the King Gambit across the way. But also, King Gambit's going to Terra here and change its typing to Flying. I really like that play because basically it's like, okay, by switching out Amoongus, I set up the rain now, so Flare Blitz is less damage. Nice knockoff into Pelipper, which will remove that life orb. But also by going for Flying Terra, ooh, the Iron Head into the Meowskarada as well. By going for Flying Terra there, it just covers for Tauros, potentially like going for a crazy prediction and going for close combat onto that slot. However, this is one of the classic situations where it's like, okay, now you've actually committed your Terra, right? And so you are down the Terra for the remainder of the game. But uh, yeah, setting up the rain is actually so nice in dealing with the Tauros here because uh, otherwise Flare Blitz would be an absolute nightmare in terms of damage output. Uh, and the flying Terra means that actually, yeah, you are pretty well protected with King Gambit right now, even though Tauros yep. on the other side has gotten these boosts. But man, that is such a cool application of Mirror. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. All right, Gia's going to preserve the Meowskarada for later. So opting to switch that out to bring that Golden Goat in. So the sucker punch that the King Gambit on Justin's side went for will not be able to connect as Flare Blitz is still going to do a hefty amount of damage into that King Gambit despite the rain as well as that flying Terra type. Pelipper though, very safe to go for a tailwind here. Oh, Justin's played this really well in my opinion. I think like 
uh, even with that surprise mirror herb. And, uh, you know, I'm, Justin knows about the mirror herb as well, right? But I, I think recognizing even if you activate it, well, I've got Pelipper, and Pelipper being used, like, defensively to set the rain here is super, super well done. But the main thing is now you've set up Tailwind, and you have, like, this King Gambit, which ate up the boost. And it's the Flying Terror that completely changes things here, right? Mm -hmm. um, as well, so you're not just weak to close combat. And so, yeah, I think it's actually still pretty tough for... Uh, Geo to actually like break through the amount of offense that's coming out so just going for a protect with both Pokemon right now to stall the turn of the Tailwind and yep. yeah try to get the speed back into your favor but I think Justin offensively right now is in a incredible incredible position. I'd like to point out that preserving the Golden Go as well is very beneficial knowing that it has Thunderbolt mm. so that would be a super effective attack into that flying Terra type King Gambit on Justin's side and of course that Pelipper doesn't want to be on the receiving end of that either so Geo just trying to figure out a way to maneuver around this difficult position of having the Tailwind active because you're not going to outspeed these two Pokemon. Yeah, my question is, do you consider just going for Terra on Golden Go right now? It's a Steel Golden Go Terra, yeah. so if you go for that, at least, like, maybe you can survive an attack from the King Gambit. It's still tricky, though. The problem is, if you don't Terra, yeah, like, you'd have to basically eat up a switch here, but this is a problem in activating that Intimidate earlier, or activating that Defiant, because now you might just lose both Pokemon mm -hmm. immediately here, and there's the Hurricane to start. Yeah, I mean, it was such a cool set up to see the mirror herb actually activate but unfortunately really not paying off in the way that geo might have wanted it to so we will see a cleave into the meowscarada and of course a tauros getting knocked out by that hurricane and for geo that means that it's just the golden go and that fourth and final pokemon in the back that he can really rely upon to get through this game yeah, I think, like, Talonflame is the Pokemon that I was maybe expecting to see a little bit earlier on. It oh. is the one, the only, the Dragonite, Dragonite. there. So, um, yeah, I mean, right now, like, Dragonite does have some offensive pressure, and this is, uh, however, actually multi-skill Dragonite instead of inner focus. And so, yeah, you know, Justin, like, going for a potential switch it into Tauros can uh, just quickly, uh, you know, bring down the uh, offensive output of that Dragonite immediately. But... With Tailwind up right now, there's still so, so much offensive pressure, and uh, the Dragonite on Geo side is actually a choice band set, and so you cannot go for Protect with it. And that's one of the best things that if you're using Tailwind, you want to see, right? Because it's like, oh, I know I can just double up onto that slot with relative ease and try to get a knockout. But here's the Terra finally coming out. Yeah, it's going to be onto the Dragonite, so normal type Terra. And so maybe, yeah, you can get some, some extra damage with that extreme speed, but you do have access to a few other options like maybe we see the ice spinner i don't know but extreme speed first try to deal with this pelipper and that stab will be enough to get the knockout before that pelipper can move again yeah and you know one thing that's actually a pretty big deal here is the king gambit going for the target onto dragonite allowing the golden go to survive and get that super effective thunderbolt and oh. that's gonna survive the assault vest really really coming up huge here right now for the king gambit there's no more rain the multi-skill is broken on the dragonite and tailwind ended and so a lot of things really uh, coming into play here but the thing is you just committed your terra into dragonite and it worked for a turn right uh, mm -hmm. to kind of increase the damage output of extreme speed but now you're up against a tauros which can uh, just click close combat into dragonite and so you can close combat dragonite king gambit can consider switching out uh, could just go for a sucker punch on a golden go as well but i think a switch here is safer just to make sure you survive the turn uh, and then amoongus in this end game can you know of course just go for um you, you actually can't spore the golden ghost it's interesting but you can at least like rage powder redirect some attacks away from yeah. uh the toros for example so there's an extreme speed to start and it's going to just go into a big guess all right so big connect there uh, the close combat will be able to secure the knockout here but i actually don't mind that you that geo didn't preserve the terra for golden go because golden ghost terra type is steel and so that does give you that vulnerability to close combat as well. And maybe in this situation, uh, Geo can, can continue to get some big damage off. And I mean, that's a knockout onto the Tauros. So you're in a position now where there's no Tailwind active here on Justin's side. That it's going to be a pretty low King Gambit when it comes to that HP that's left. Yeah. And it's stuck as a flying. There's, there's <laughs> one move that changes everything here, though, and that's that Pollen True. Puff. Basically, like, 
yeah, you can just sucker punch infinitely, and yeah, that's enough to KO Golden Goat. But basically, like, you know, Geo has no way around the sucker punch, so yeah, I mean, you could protect and try to maybe stall out the sucker punch PP, but because Pollen Puff exists on the Amoongus, you can just keep healing King Gambit back up and get it to full HP anyway. What was really critical, of course, was the King Gambit surviving that Thunderbolt yes. earlier, though. But that was a really interesting game one. I think, yeah, it was really cool to see the mirror art, but I think Geo now recognizes, okay, I got a decent setup for it. But the combination of Flying Terra plus Pelipper setting up the rain just makes it actually pretty difficult for Tauros to do very much. So I'm wondering if Tauros even comes out in that in the, in the next game because like it was cool, but it did have to give King Gambit a Defiant boost. And by giving it the Defiant boost, you then make it stronger. I, I think for Justin, he recognizes, okay, King Gambit was so good in that last battle. I just have to make sure it doesn't get burnt by the Talonflame because that's the adjustment I would expect Geo to make. And there it is. Yep. Here comes the Talonflame and the Dragonite, and you'll see the answer on the other side here from Justin as well. That Pelipper and that Golden Go. So uh, this is a strategy we saw a lot when we looked at Kyogre and Zacian at the end of Sword and Shield. Kyogre saying the rain <laughs> next to the Zacian that was the Steel type. Wow. Uh, it's like that, but definitely not. Pelipper is not... Um, not a fish. I'm laughing. I'm just like, like Mom, <laughs> I want Kyogre Zashian. Mom, we have Kyogre Zashian yeah. at home. This is Kyogre <laughs> Zashian. Kyogre Zashian. <laughs> <laughs> but I think right now, the, the main thing, though, is like, okay, you were able to bait out that Talonflame early on. You've got the Pelipper out. No Terra coming out. Ooh, nicely done. Just, you know, just setting up Tailwind, getting speed control up immediately here. Uh, I think you do have to uh, worry about, well, first of all, Dragonflow, okay, almost gets the knockout on the Pelipper, but Hurricane goes on to Dragon. I actually think that's a pretty favorable trade for Geo, all things considered. You got a lot of damage off onto a Pokemon that threatens yep. your Talonflame immensely, and Talonflame's actually still out. I honestly think that uh, Justin had the opportunity to just go for Nasty Plot last turn, because there isn't that much offense he needs to be worried about from the opposing side. Yeah. But there is a Choice Band Earthquake from Geo, so maybe he just wanted to see, okay, let me scout out for whether or not you're going to go for it. Um, but yeah, Geo doing a really great job, and now you're able to conserve that Talonflame for later on, I think. Uh, Justin had the opportunity to maybe knock out the Talonflame there with the uh, Hydro Pump, but now Talonflame will be able to be conserved, and maybe even well, it was King Gambit later on in this battle. Yeah, I, I mean, too, the, like the Gale Wings is still active, so that's something that I feel like you definitely want to be able to save for later, even if you just want to go for another Tailwind. Uh, but Dragon Claw, once again, this Dragonite! Oh my goodness! That was so much damage! I mean, Amoongus has got, has brought down to a point where you're going to activate the Citrus Berry, and so that healing is now off the table as well for Justin to rely upon later, but Nasty Plot now Nice and easy there for the Golden Go, as <laughs> Tauros would love to see that. Mirror Herb activating once again. Um, I mean, it doesn't, I don't know if it helps out like that much, but, you know, it's still nice to see it work. Yeah, I think um, <laughs> Citrus Berry on Amoongus here, a really big deal, allowing to heal it back up to a point where it could potentially survive another Dragon Claw. It looks like Justin here is also just uh, has conviction to just bring out that Tauros immediately. Like, Intimidate is so nice right now, right? Because it's like you're up against all these physical attackers, and what Justin is doing is basically really taking advantage of the fact that it's not inner focus on Giovanni's um, Dragonite, and so mm -hmm. you're able to actually get all this value from Intimidate like you normally wouldn't get otherwise. Yeah, you're going to see the Tauros now come out for Justin as uh, Geo's just playing a save. Going for a Protect onto his Tauros and then Dragon Claw again. Th this Dragonite has been able to get so much damage down. I mean, even the Golden Go not targeting it, trying to get rid of that Tauros on the other side. Yeah, and that was even with an Intimidate, still did so much damage. I mean, the thing now is that you did get Tauros in... Uh, safely um, for, uh, in for an Intimidate. And so, yeah, I, I think the decision to conserve the Tauros, both players actually conserving Tauros here, makes a lot of sense. Uh, Talonflame comes back out, and so the main thing is in conserving Tauros, you're able to potentially use it for uh, Talonflame later on, although there was actually the ability, ability for Justin to just straight up go for, like, Raging Bull in that slot. True. Um, but maybe just wanting to not faint to Dragonfall, and this is such a safe switch in. And it's like, yeah, this Dragonite's doing damage, but the Intimidates are really adding up, and this Golden Goal is still just kind of left untouched and getting a lot of free damage across the board, and oh, that's so much damage in the Talonflame. Wow. I mean, it did get brought back out right as that Tailwind ended, and it's able to hang on. Uh, it's carrying a wide lens, you know, just to put that information out there. So you're really looking at maybe higher accuracy Will-O-Wisps. Um, that sounds nice, doesn't it, Aaron? <laughs> Uh, that sounds real nice, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you're right. Anyway, uh, <laughs> looking at the next turn here, um, just kind of seeing how Justin can, can keep control of this game. Because it, it's really been 
You're right. Like, Dragonite has been able to do damage, but even onto the Amoongus, it had the Regenerator healing when it got it changed, you know, switched back in. Um, tell. Tower Flame's able to go for the Tailwind again because it's naturally just a pretty fast Pokemon, so it doesn't need that Gale Wings to give it that priority. Uh, but yeah, it's going to get knocked out here to another Shadow Ball coming out here from Justin's Golden Go. Yeah, I really like the decision to finally switch out Dragonite. Um, and this is a great Golden Go switch in. Oh, and right it. in the spore. Exactly. So you, now, I mean, Geo's gotten some better offensive positioning, right? You set up the speed boost via Tailwind. You're able to uh, reset those Intimidates on the Dragonite as well. Tauros is able to come out now. Um, but yeah, I mean, the main question is still, how do you break through this Golden Goal from Justin's end? Because it hasn't even really taken any damage. Justin's done a really good job making a lot of this, like these defensive plays. Um, I, I do think if Justin had just like gone for Nasty Plot actually on turn one of the battle, like the Golden Goal would be so well positioned right now. But the reality is he doesn't necessarily need it. Um, and so he's got the Pokemon lead right now. Um, Geo is gonna you know be able to move faster over the next couple of turns, and so that's one thing you kind of have to play around. But yeah, uh, I think right now Justin's probably content just taking trades, whereas Geo needs to find the big place that could get him. Yeah, agreed. I mean, we're even gonna see a Terra now uh, coming out here. So let's see what can be done with this terrestrialization onto Geo's Golden Go and a Terra. Justin's side also. So both of the Golden Go now receiving their additional steel typing here from the Terra, uh, the Terra type. But um, hey, you know, speed interactions here. Does does that say anything to you? Like, we did see Geo's Golden Go terrestrialize first. Yeah, with Tailwind up though, I think it's hard to. Confirm so it is which hard. One. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so. Uh, Flare Blitzer will just get the clean knockout onto Amoongus. And so Amoongus is finally out of the way. I think it's been a huge nuisance to go up against throughout this entire battle. And uh, it's actually Make It Rain coming out rather than the Shadow Ball, but, you know, Make It Rain would cover for... Oh, my gosh. That, wow. That, that does so much damage. Yeah, <laughs> even with the resist, too, yeah, from the yeah. Steel Typing. <laughs> that's amazing. Like, just amazing to see that. I mean, the Shadow Ball, too, like, super smart for, for both of these players oh. to just, like, go after the Golden Go on the other side. But, um... Wow! I feel like I always expect Golden Go to be like bulkier. Like we've commented so many. Well, because it's like it's made. Of, it's like a thousand coins. Yeah. <laughs> That's like that, it, it should be pretty heavy. Like all those coins, but <laughs> one measly hit, and you goes. <laughs> like. He just melts. It's fine. <laughs> Um, uh, well, I mean, that's a huge offensive threat from Geo's side that's just been removed there. The Golden Go does get knocked out. Dragonite gets to come back in, but right into an Intimidate from Justin. So a free switch there is going to affect both Dragonite and Tauros on Geo's side. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a pretty close finish, especially with, like, this uh, Intimidate, right? Like, uh, there is the Tailwind uh, support from the opposing side right now. So, okay, the, I, the idea here is let me bring in Pelipper. That sets up the range, decreases the damage output of Flare Blitz, and I have intimidated you as well. And the Protect here is just to make sure, like, okay, even if you Flare Blitz, you, know, you can't crit me, for example. And I still have to turn a Tailwind as well. But it's actually going to be close combat instead, which I think is really smart. To, just go for it. Yeah, not faint from, you know, specifically the rain. And so the idea here is, okay, you get the Dragon Claw off, you bring Tauros in once again, you get a second Intimidate off yep. to both of these Pokemon. And this is where Dragonite just really, really, really misses inner focus. Yeah, I mean, multi-scale is, is really nice to have, but you completely lose utility of it after you, you, you take a hit. So definitely wish maybe the inner focus was for this specific matchup, but... I've seen multi-scale pay off in other ways when it comes down to like having Dragonite on your team. So maybe just this isn't right matchup for it. Oh, he's okay. So yeah, Justin's going for the double protect because Tailwind is still up. He doesn't get it. So now oh. you can just close combat, Dragon Claw, double up into the Golden Ghost slot. Maybe close combat in itself just knocks it out. Yeah, it that does. was enough. Yeah. And that'll secure the game actually up for Geo. So Geo getting that second Tailwind up in this endgame was actually so, so critical. And I think the, the really big turn was when Justin actually just lost the Amoongus to the Flare Blitz there. Um, it was a tough position, but I think there was the ability to potentially consider switching Amoongus out into Pelipper to at least set up the rain. Does survive the Dragon Claw, but this is Choice Scarf Tauros. It's locked into Raging Bull now. So, I don't know. If it gets a critical hit on a Dragonite, is there ever a chance it gets the knockout? I really don't know the uh, damage truck super well. With Tailwind stalling out here, yeah, you're just hoping for uh, a crit. So, let's Maybe see. with the rain, too? Uh, the range is not <laughs> enough of a boost there either. So the Dragon Claw from Geo's Dragonite will be enough to bring us to a game three. We have been having some great sets today. Best of three is going to game three.
seeing some incredible Pokemon being used by both, like all of our trainers today, um, and even just the Golden Go versus Golden Go matchup, that's been one that I feel like we ha we haven't been focusing enough on. Like because of, when you think about a mechanic like that, especially when you think about like you know how Mega Evolution has worked. I think Z moves are, are even more accurate like this. You get like one chance yep. in some cases, like the Z move either hits or it doesn't. Um, and so this is kind of feels like that too. Like it, very risky sometimes, but high risk, high reward when it comes to some of these terrestrializations that we've seen so far oh, this weekend. It's got but the <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> we, we were hoping to be able to see this, but it is going to be Gothitelle what? and Dragonite here for Geo. And Justin has the Amoongus and the Tauros. And by my calculations, Aaron, neither of these can make it out Wait. of this battlefield right now. This is so sick. First of all, I do agree with your calculations. I've done the math. It checks out. <laughs> but this is, this is like, what a bold play to bring <laughs> to tell, right? Like, in, into a team with Golden Gold, Mimikyu, and King Gambit. I'm, I, I mean, the, the, the I'm gamble has if paid I'm off. Geo, I'm like, oh my goodness, like none of those Pokemon are out <laughs> on the field right now. So he has the ability to just go for damage, right? Yeah, like fake out and just attack with Dragonite in turn one. I was also thinking you can consider switching out Dragonite if you have your Tauros in the back and get those Intimidates off. But let's see how much Wave Crash does in the Gothitelle. Ooh, no, it's okay. about half. Okay. Okay, okay. But there's a Citrus Berry. Yes, so, yeah. so that's a three-hit knockout right there. Yep. And, and you stop the Amoongus at this point because you really did put Justin into a position where Amoongus wants to spore. It, it just wants to start putting things to sleep because at that point, maybe you get a chance to switch out the Gothitelle and then, and then you don't have to deal with it anymore and you can make pivots yourself. Um, but I feel like Geo actually has some, some quite good options. Uh, to be able to deal with this. I mean, you just want to extreme suit the Tauros. It's, ah, it's not enough for the knockout here. So wave crash now coming through, but Gothitelle still does not get knocked out here. Oh, this might be time for a little hypnosis from Gothitelle, mm. though. Let's see. Is it going to go for it? It is, oh, and it hits! hits. Gothitelle no says, way. Amoongus, what you can do, I can do better. I, I can put Pokemon to sleep, too. 60% yeah. of the time, but... Yeah, well, it works so, well, 60% of the time, it's all the time, Exactly, Aaron. That's exactly. how math works in VGC. <laughs> I mean, uh, what a huge knockout, though, onto the Tauros. The Wave Crash recoil will be able to get the knockout there, but when King Gambit comes in, uh, got the toe in a little bit of a pinch, but I think you're okay at this point. If you're Geo, you got rid of a pretty big threat, and uh, now you can make pivots of your own to be able to deal with this, too. All right. Now, I was also curious how fast, like, Gothitelle is relative to King Gambit, but if Amoongus stays asleep here and that Hypnosis hits, it's not no, going to no. hit here, though. I was going to say, that would just be, like, <laughs> absolutely game-defining, and so King Gambit will be able to get the knockout, but... Yeah, I think Gothitelle did put in a lot of work here. Prevented Amoongus from switching out, prevented the uh, Tauros from uh, switching out, you got the knockout onto it. And Amoongus does stay asleep, although even if it wakes up and gets spore in a Golden Go, it doesn't actually work because of Golden Go's yep. ability. Well, I, so so that's the thing that's that's really nice about the, the switch that Geo made. It's, it's, it's quite safe. And uh, we're going to see the same strategy here again. We go. Tauros. Intimidate drops the King Gambit, so the Defiant boost gets activated, but guess what? There's a Mirror Herb that that Tauros is holding, so it will copy the stat changes of that King Gambit. So it does get that super nice attack boost uh, as you enter into these next stages. And and G Justin doesn't really have a choice here. I mean, maybe you, you, you cycle it out, try to bring in the Pelipper just to be able to uh, allow your King Gambit to survive for a little bit longer. But you also set up the rain, which is just super good against the Blaze Breed Tauros on Geo's side. This is such a fast-paced game. Like both players know exactly what they want to do right now. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was Justin's choice uh, <laughs> with the with the Gothitelle and the Shadow Tag, but yes, that is definitely how that worked out. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So Flare Blitz actually goes into the Pelipper slot. So I think it's likely Amoongus will just be able to actually survive this turn. Here's Make It Rain from the Golden Go on the opposing side, and. Uh, Okay. Okay, both survive Does right Amoongus now. Does Amoongus wake up? Special attack drop. Let's see. There's the berry. Okay, <laughs> hold on. Pause. Pause. All right, little uh, bit of citrus berry okay. recovery. And oh, it's still it asleep. asleep. No way. Okay. Wow. I mean, all of a sudden, just like that, Golden Go could just secure two knockouts That's here. I, I actually don't think you can really come. Uh, <laughs> is there any way? Okay, I guess Amoongus could... Because I'm thinking Tauros can just launch Flare Blitz into Amoongus and Golden Go can Thunderbolt into Pelipper. And I feel like there's 
not too much that you can do to cover for that. Uh, especially, so the, the Steel Terror on Geo's end, by the way, was to cover for super effective Sucker Punch in a Golden Go. Yep. And so you just become a little bit more defensive, but it's a huge sleep on a Moongus, and King Gambit now switches back in, but yeah, there's the Flare Blitz, and I'm pretty sure that KO's in the Yep. That's going to be a big knockout there, so not even giving a Moongus a chance to get a Spore into Geo's Tauros, but uh, at this point, like, Golden Go just going for the Thunderbolt here. Uh, yes, King Gambit's going to survive that, but at this point, what <laughs> what can it do? I think what makes this really tough is if you look at Justin's team, there's no protect on Tauros, there's no protect on Pelipper, there's no protect on King Gambit, it's and there's no the protect on Amoongus. And yeah. So it, you, there's like, it's uh, so safe for Geo to just go for attacks. Exactly, and in an open team sheet format where you know your opponent doesn't have protect, there's just so much more confidence with that, right? And so it's like the Tauros is essentially, or sorry, the Pelipper is one hit away from getting knocked out. Uh, and yeah, we, we haven't even seen a Terra, you know, up until this point. And so uh, the Golden Go is actually going to pivot out right now. And uh, yeah, Dragonite comes back in. But I feel like Geo just has such a big lead right now. And with the multi-scale here as well, you'll be able to survive. And uh, beautiful switch in yep. to bypass that Sucker Punch. Exactly. So really nice way to be able to, to deal with that. And of course, Geo's Tauros going to move before Pelipper gets a chance to use its attack. And Doros, Doros putting in so much work. Gothitelle putting in a bunch of work here. Justin is going to go ahead and lock in the forfeit here. Geo taking this wow. round 2-1 in one of the coolest sets we've seen all day. I think that was that was so fun to watch. I mean, we saw a lot of adjustments from both ends, and I, I think, you know, this was definitely very winnable for Justin um, as well, especially, I mainly think of game two. I think game three, Geo had honestly full control. Yeah. The conviction to lead got the tell. Not even bring Gothel, but to lead it into <laughs> Justin's team is is that's not a easy decision to make, but 